Good, man, for real, y'all good? Yeah. Anybody still hungover a little bit? <laughs> oh, no, of course not, of course not. <laughs> I mean, we, we rule breakers. How y'all from? <laughs> How you doing, Good, 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 good. Brett, how you doing, Brett? Yeah. Oh, I don't probably need this up here. They didn't pay for this. <laughs> right. Uh, Congrats, move it. We're back. Okay, y'all. We're back. So, B dot. Yes. <laughs> we know that you started at Winston in 2000. I did. You didn't have to tell all that off the jump. Right. You didn't have to go right into that. My, who, who wasn't even born yet? Who wasn't? Look at that. Wow. That is amazing. I love that though. I love that though because I still get to come back and kick it and we can have a great time. Can I do something before we get started and move any further? Please do. Because they weren't properly, properly introduced. Not saying so hard to do a great job, but y'all should know some things about them, right? They, if you're here with somebody that you met them here at college, make some noise one time. You met them. Yes. Yeah. See, that was them. They met in college. They are AKAs. Did you know that? They're AKAs. They went to college in California. You did what I'm saying? Should be. No. So I just wanted y'all to know that they're super cool, but I also wanted y'all to know that we weren't introduced to y'all correctly, oh. right? Like that over there, DJ King J, that is the number one HBCU DJ in the country. That's a fact. That's a fact. And this crowd right here, we're, we're a little limited because I, I can see that some people just came for the pizza, praise pizza. God. <laughs> I know how you are. But see, this is a lot. We're lit. Can, can you just give me like a song or two just to get the energy just right Please. for one second? Just. It ain't a Hey, snip, snip. Say what? Hey, 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 hey. Look, I'm coming still. Oh, y'all don't know this yet. Y'all don't know this yet. What's that? How the song go? Say what? Snip, what? Give me one more, one more, KJ, one more. Give me one what's more. Another, what's another one? Say, <laughs> okay, we got some energy right there. We got some energy right there. You did. You did what I'm saying. Hey. If you send me in, you got to say what's up. Look, hey. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Somebody say, yes, you. Okay, okay, sorry. Now, now that we're all family, rambling, yeah. now we can have some fun and kick it a little bit back. What's happening? Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Germany. Love Thank that. you, Brittany. Mr. Turner. Absolutely. Been that way since 2000 when I got here. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay, so you started in 2000. You still have maintained close ties with the university as an alumni. How has going to an HBCU really influenced your life and your career? Oh man, um, Winston-Salem State literally changed the trajectory of my life. Um, when I came to college, I didn't know who I was. I was a felon. I was a felon at 16 years old. I never really thought I would have a career. Um, typical, grew up in a household with just one parent, pop left. Um, and I decided to go to college, not because I wanted to better myself, but my mom legit gave me an ultimatum. She was like, you have to get out of my house this fall. You either have to get a job, or you gotta go to school, but you're getting out of my house. And I was like, well, if I go to college, that's four years I can just chill, so I'm gonna do that, you see? And I'm from Greensboro, so I didn't wanna go to a &T. So I came to Winston-Salem State. And um, it was the best decision ever, man, because I learned a lot about myself. Um, the moniker B-Dot, that name, was created here at Winston-Salem State. One of my partners, my freshman year, gave me that name. And by my sophomore year, I was doing PA announcing in the press box. I never thought that I would be, I, I never had aspirations to do that, but I would host a bunch of events on campus. And the chancellor at that time, Harold Martin, who is now the chancellor at A&T, and he's about to retire actually, um, he actually pulled me to the side, he said, I love the way that you can, you know, you can um, appeal to the students and the administration. Do you think you'd have any interest in doing PA? And I'm like, yeah. So I did the first game and I had a great time in the press box and in the Winston-Salem Journal, they wrote the worst article ever of me. 
talked about how unprofessional I was. Um, I wasn't saying, because I was up to teed up. Like, y'all been, who been in the games? Y'all been in the games? Yeah, so y'all know how I get, right? I was doing all of that lit for us, but when they would do something, I wouldn't even say their name, like nothing, like touchdown six. And they were like, that's very unprofessional, you know? And the AD at the time, Chico Caldwell, and the chancellor, they all pulled me in the office, and they said, you have a great skill set. If you can just learn the professional side, you'll be dangerous. And from that, I have literally been able to create a career out of PA announcement and hosting events. And again, that all started right here at Winston Salem State, sitting in those seats. So I owe this all my all my all my everything. So when I think back to my college days, there were key moments and experiences that really altered my brain chemistry. One of those was like you mentioned about Brittany and I joining a sorority. We're line sisters and hmm. it brought out a lot of me. What It's already in you, but it helps you to harness you hmm. know, those characteristics and qualities. And we started that podcast only because we met in college and online and the whole bit. So y'all weren't mass comm majors? No. no. Oh, wow. Psychology, big psychology. Yeah, sociology. So. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, being in the sorority and meeting my best friend, we decided to create this podcast, and every day I'm able to live out my purpose mm -hmm. and make a positive impact in the lives of black women. And, and black people, we are so passionate about leveraging who we are as people right. through this medium. Um, but what do you think has been a key, uh, your experience here at HBCU, what do you feel like was a key moment or experience here that really allows you to positively impact change? Um, uh, honestly, getting caught smoking weed in Brown Hall. <laughs> no cap. I mean, I'm going to tell you why. I was skipping class with one of my partners, and it was a um, speech class, and the professor at that time, rest his, rest his soul, was Lorenzo Logie Meacham. And we didn't go to class, and our teacher, Professor Meacham, told the class, everybody who did come to class, if y'all tell me what room they're in, we'll let y'all leave class. Wow. You know they snitched. Would you have snitched? Yeah, I would have snitched. Yes. 515 Brown Hall, though. So we here knock at the door. We in the room chilling. We here knock at the door. And I'm like, yo. And I go to the door. He's like, yes. And he's like, it's Mitchell. And I'm like, yo. We open the door. And we sitting on one bed. And he sits on the other bed. And he puts his hat, he used to always wear a fedora, he puts it on his knee. And he just looks it up. And he says, are y'all gonna see it? We were freshmen. He said, are y'all gonna come here and ruin your lives for some weed? Mm. And it wasn't the fact that that question was so profound. It was the fact that he gave a damn enough right. to come over there and find us and would not let us get left behind like that. That's an HBCU. That's an HBCU. For real. Like, you, like, I don't know. I've never been to a PWI. No shade to any other uh, university. But at an HBCU, that's what's going to happen. Like, he saw something in us that we didn't see. And we made a vow we would never miss his class ever. And he became a super mentor to the point my junior year, he saw me walking on campus. He said, yo, where are you going? I said, I'm just chilling. He said, hop in the truck. And me and him smoke the J together. You know what I'm saying? And that was all, and that's full circle. That's full circle right there. You did what I'm saying? But that moment taught me accountability. That moment taught me, even though he knew, he never came in and said one thing about stop smoking weed, y'all shouldn't be doing He didn't give us that father speech. He was like, I see y'all doing something stupid. I know you're going to do stupid stuff, but don't risk the benefit and why you're here yeah. doing stupid stuff. One of my biggest regrets of college, too, one is I didn't pledge alpha. Like, I wanted to play so bad, but my GPA sucked. Oh. And at the time, like, I was beat out. Like, I was hosting everything. Like, I was a big deal. Like, so I told them, I was like, bro, like, forget my GPA, I'm died. Let me, and they was like, no. And I'm yeah. like, okay. <laughs> you know, I respect it. You did. But I didn't do what it took to say, so at that point, I was like, well, fine. If y'all don't want to be died, then forget it. And now I look back and I hate that. I hate that I was one of the most popular people that ever went to this school and I never ran for Mr. Ram. I didn't run for Mr. Rand because I knew all the responsibilities. Y'all yeah. asked some are a good question. I would just like to say, like, don't be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. If you're comfortable, you're going the wrong way. I'm not saying don't have fun. You can have fun in whatever career. They're having a great time. They live in California. They got school out here. This is a budget. This is a set. Yeah. They, they got to come out. They're doing what they love to do. 
but they still have to be uncomfortable. They don't know none of y'all, so that's an uncomfortable position, but they're comfortable in their careers. Y'all see the difference? So be comfortable being uncomfortable because that's where the greatness comes from. Real talk, sorry. No, but to keep it two Virgils with you beyond that, this is like what we do as our side hustle. To keep it two what? What you just said? Two Virgils, which okay. is like, mm. you know, a hundred. Oh, I like that. Keep it mm. um, to be completely <laughs> honest with y'all, like we work corporate jobs. We work nine to fives. I had to go to work on Sunday, so right. I could be out of work Monday and Tuesday. So right. it's a lot of risk involved. Uh, typically, I would be like, damn. I ain't trying to really call off work. But then it's like, if this is what I say that I want to do full time, right. then I have to be willing and ready to take risk right. and lean into opportunities when they present themselves. You know, a lot of times we're so busy telling the universe, asking God, praying, please give me opportunities. Please allow me to walk through, you know, into different spaces and opportunities. And when they show up, we're not prepared to lean in. Right. So this is an example to your point of being uncomfortable and doing things that you wouldn't normally do right. to continue to get to the places that you really want to be. You know? right. Right. If you're a preacher, just say that. Okay, amen. Right. Stop all those. Amen. So be that you live what most would consider to be a dream. You're a college graduate. You have a beautiful family. You have a thriving career. But when we're in college, I know when I was in college, it was rough. Like, I knew what I was aspiring to be. But the feelings that I was feeling while I was getting to it was like, you know what, I'm over this, I'm ready to drop out, it's too much, biology isn't doing what it was supposed to do, I need to switch my major. Right. It was a lot. So what advice would you give to current students who are feeling that contrast, but they still aspire to be change makers and achieve their goals and their dreams? It's gonna sound cliche, and you're gonna be like, oh, I've heard this a million times, but you gotta do what you love doing. Like, if you're doing something that you just think is going to get you a good check, it's going to fade out and you're going to end up hating it. My wife is doing that right now. My wife has us in like $150,000 worth of debt to be a project manager. She has a great career, makes over $100,000 a year. She's great, but it drives her crazy because that's not her passion. Yeah. She always enjoys doing like buildings and stuff like that. What she really likes doing is interior design and styling. That's what she really likes doing. Right? But now, once you get on the other side, see so many times y'all try to rush this part, thinking that it's better on the other side, and it's so much worse. Like, seriously, like I was just talking to Lay, Lay, who's doing photography. Like, that's my sister. Like, that's somebody, I always come back to school and meet people, like y'all should know that by now. Lay is somebody who's always in my DMs. Doc, can I shout at you and take pictures? Yes, pull up. Doc, can I get, yes. So, but Lay was just telling me how, you know, she was having a financial hardship. You know, and I was just telling her, like, that don't stop when you get no. out of this university umbrella, is what I like to call it. You dig what I'm saying? Like, that never stops. So to that point, like, you have to just keep going. Yeah. That's why I tell the stories of getting caught smoking weed. That's why I tell the stories about getting academically kicked out and having to write a letter to get back in school. Yeah. Right? Because it's not going to be an easy journey. It's not going to be a different world. Right? Y'all probably don't. No, that right. Yeah. Right. But it's not going to be this cakewalk where you just go through four years, have a great time, you pledge, you graduate, back from cum laude, you go get you a hundred thousand dollar a year job, and you said no. It's not going to be anything like that. The struggles you're experiencing right now, they only magnify because when you leave here, you don't have the benefit of saying I'm a college student. Yeah. By the time you get out, everybody's expecting you to already have it figured out. And what upsets me the most about y'all. I promise, and it's not your fault, it's the administration's fault. But what upsets me the most is they don't stress internships enough to y'all. Mm -hmm. The only time you think it's time for you to do an internship is your senior year. By then it's way too late. Yeah. You need to be doing internships your freshman year. Not to see what you like, but to see what you don't like. Mm -hmm. It was suck to go four years getting a degree in a profession you think you like, you get a job in it and you hate it. Yeah. But if you did an internship there, you would know that you didn't want to do that. Also, college is all about connections. When you're doing these internships, you're getting connections. The reason I've been able to have a successful 20-year career in doing arena hosting and comedy is because of the connections I made on this campus. The reason I'm sitting in this chair because of connections. Fred Whitfield, the manager of that, I mean Fred Whit, the manager of um, Terrence J, called me a couple weeks ago. They work with y'all around all the time. They work with Parker. Hey, Doc, do you think? Yes, team me up. Connections. Chico Bean, 85 South. Y'all know Bean? Right here on this campus. That's where he started. He and I, 
kicking it. We started the FLCS. I raised religiously. Me, Bean, Darren Brand, and my brother Drankin had a four-man show that's similar to the 85 South Show. And we did it for 10 years. That, form, that, that brotherhood was formed on this campus. Y'all don't know what you're going to grow up to be. So love on everybody, so that when everybody grows up and successful, they remember you. Period. You dig what I'm saying? Like, like I'm, I'm, I swear I'm telling y'all the real. It sounds so cliche, but it's so true. Whatever it is, I like entertaining people. I like having a good time. Mm -hmm. I found a way to create a career where I can provide for my family doing that. Oh, no crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> so being a creative or uh, the face of a brand, we're always on, you know, especially <laughs> in the age of social media, we're open to criticism and people sharing their opinions. Um, unsolicited. Right. <laughs> yeah, that unsolicited. Part. So how do you manage your mental health in today's like society and continue to like push forward with your mission, your purpose? I'm a Virgo. Yeah. Yes. yes, it's the Virgo in the house today. Shout out to the Virgo. Virgo gang. So, so like, we don't take too kindly to people talking junk to us. Yeah. And we feel like if you say something to us, not only do we have to say something back, but we have to crush you so vicious that you never make that mistake ever, ever again. Right? Right. So. I've honed certain skills. <laughs> like um, growing up, I was very unattractive. I know you can't believe it now. I know, I know, I know. But trust, no. <laughs> like, and I used to have big, thick glasses. Like we grew up super project, so like all I had was jokes. You did know what I'm saying? Like I was little, I couldn't fight. All I had was jokes. So my jokes had to be vicious, like hurt your feelings. And I've mastered those skills. And so when people talk junk to me. I know that I have the power of words, so I have to use that with wisdom. Yeah. There was a time in my life where everybody would get it, Listen. And, but, they, but you can say things on social media that can never be erased. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have gone through, without sharing too much, but I'm sure y'all been in the WSSU group chats, I've had my share of uh, situations on social media, and now I have to be more cognizant of who I'm talking to. Is this person even worth it? when you're checking comments, because people are going to say stuff, and they're gonna, you can't get too high with the compliments, and you definitely can't get too low with the negatives. You dig what I'm saying? Case in point, I was auditioning um, two weeks ago to do the morning show in Atlanta, right, on V103, the Heritage Station. Very excited. Went down there for a week auditioning. Thought it went well. I get back to North Carolina, and on Monday, they run a segment asking the people, why are you mad? People calling up, I'm mad because y'all had that dude on last week. Who the heck was that? Won't the want the want. And I'm sitting there and that crushed me. Right. Like that hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like on a like that really, really crushed me to the point where I had to talk to my therapist. Yeah. I did. Like I had to make an emergency conversation. Like I need I need at least 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Because and I, ther my therapist saved my life. I know a lot of times in black households we told you only supposed to talk to God about your problems. Don't talk to nobody else. But the same way you can go to the gym by yourself and get results, you get better results if you have a trainer, right? right? The same way with therapy. You can get through life by yourself, but there are people who actually go to school to tell you why you're dealing with certain things you're dealing with. And sometimes, I grew up in the church, so I know prayer, but sometimes prayer ain't enough. Sometimes you just need somebody to bounce conversation yeah, off of, yeah. you get what I'm saying? And to my therapist, like, we got to talking about this, and she just had to remind me, and it's something that I saw y'all send me earlier, but imposter syndrome. Like, imposter syndrome is real. Like, imposter syndrome, if you don't know what it is, it's you telling yourself you can't do what you know you can do. On the most basic level, that's imposter syndrome. And we, we suffer from that as creatives a lot. You put out a video, and you're thinking, this is the one. Like, this, at least 20,000 views. <laughs> at least, this one's going to be the one right here. 200 views. You think your IG broke. That does something, that does something to you. The shadow ban. That shadow ban is real. Like you, so, but so to that point, though, like you just have to remember and be confident in who you are. But the only way you can do that is by failing. 
Failures make the biggest W's. And in college, again, while you have the university umbrella, allow yourself to fail. But you can only fail if you're trying to do stuff. Just sitting back like, I mean, I, I know we got the mass comm department. I want to do a podcast, but I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to wait till I graduate. That's stupid. Because the people that you want to talk to on the podcast are here. What happens is you get them here, and when they grow up, they remember you. I experienced it this whole weekend. It's so many people that recognize my voice, and they're like, oh, man, my voice is synonymous with their college experience. So when they hear it, it's like, oh, nostalgia. Build that nostalgia with each other. I promise. Build the community. Yes. <laughs> Drop my bomb over there. Yeah. King J. Yeah. Listen. Okay, I love the sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have your hands in a lot. You really do. Have you ever had a moment where you have hit a wall and where you felt burned out, like you just couldn't continue going on? And if so, how did you navigate through that? Like I said earlier, you just gotta keep going for real. You're gonna hear way more no's than your yeses. For the audition for Atlanta, I already told me I didn't get the job. You know what I'm saying? Like you're gonna get those things suck. I remember Terrence J. I remember trying out for BET New Faces. Some of y'all were probably just being born around that time. But let me tell you what happened. BET was looking for hosts because AJ and Free had left. Yep. So they had this big campaign on who's going to be the new faces of 106 and Park. And I remember going down, driving down to Atlanta, Georgia to audition. And in that time frame, again, I was cocky. I told you the alpha story. Like I was just very cocky. And life will humble you. Life will humble you. I went down there, horrible audition, didn't get the job. And that hurt, you know what I'm saying? Like, and watching Terrence get the job and then seeing him super, 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 for years, I couldn't help but have a comparison on my own. Like, man, dang, man, if I would've just been more prepared. Yeah. Dang, I could, I could be Terrence J. For, I'm telling you, for years I went through that, my own demons, imposter syndrome. I don't think I've ever, ever admitted this, but that is a fact. And again, like, through therapy, you learn, like, how to just believe more in yourself. You learn, again, about abandonment issues and how you want to be a people pleaser so much that sometimes you just do yourself a disservice by trying to please other people, other folks. You know what I'm saying? But to the point of the question, um, you just got to keep going. Like, you're going to hear no's. Sometimes, somebody told me recently that if you hear a no, the devil cannot close doors. Listen. He said, the devil, I, that was my first time hearing this. He said, the devil cannot close doors. He only opens doors so that you fall through. That's what the devil does. If a door closes, that was God. And that right like, there was a bar to me. Because it made so, thank you. Sound, that was for you, Britt. Britt, that sounds like He clocked in, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, though. And when you think about that, like, that makes good sense. Like, yeah, the devil's going to open up doors so you can trap and fall in it. But if a door closes, I promise you, that was God sending you in a different direction. So trust that. Be sad about it for however long. Get over it and then get back to the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I'll clap for that because that was weird. You know, I really love that you're really speaking to your individual journey because I feel like for so, so many of us, myself included, it's easy to look at what everybody else is doing and what are they getting and why am I not getting that opportunity? I've been putting in just as much work. Right. We have that feeling, that sentiment all the time. I'm like, girl, you see what they got. Right. Right. You right. started, we started first. Yeah, <laughs> right. you know, it right. comes up, but I just want to encourage all of y'all, no matter what it is that you're doing, to put your blinders on. You have to be so intensely focus on your own story, your own journey. Nobody's gonna get what you are supposed to get. Nobody's gonna take from you what you're supposed right. to have, right. right? Nothing that's for you will ever pass you. Right. And I love that you're just speaking to the comparison that you might have been feeling, but like you're here having your own right. moment. Right. And Everybody else is gonna have their own moment, right. but the two don't coincide. They don't overlap, you know? Right. So just be empowered and encouraged to live out your own story, right. Right. you know? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're fine. Give you a clap, Johnny. Give you a clap. Okay. So, 
I love that you're using your voice here to talk about mental health and you brought up your therapist. How else do you feel like we can continue to reduce the stigma about mental health, especially in marginalized communities? A lot of black men don't aren't as open about, oh, I'm going to talk to my therapist. I had to make a 911 appointment. Right. What like how do we continue to keep that conversation going where, you know, we feel comfortable? I really don't know the answer to that question. Like, and that's being honest. I think with therapy, there has to be something that makes you want to go to therapy, yeah. right? Like, because I tried therapy twice. The first time I tried therapy, I said, I want a white woman mm -hmm. as my therapist. And the reason was because I was like, yo, I want somebody that's so different from me that they can't have a biased opinion. Like, they're, like it's gonna be completely unbiased. But being in those sessions, there's such a detachment. Yeah. I mean, there's such a detachment like that it was not <laughs> beneficial for either one of us. Yeah. So I left therapy alone, and I blanketed all of therapy with that experience. Then further down the line, I was having issues, quite transparently, in my marriage. I was just making a bunch of stupid decisions professionally and in my marriage that I just didn't understand why. And it forced me to go, and I said, you know what, this time, I'm going to talk to a black man. Yeah, Because he what knows you know. me, That's right? What? So I get to therapy, signed up for this black guy. When I get there, they had overbooked him. And they said, the only person here is this black lady named Jackie Horry. Even better. And they said, you can go to her or you can wait two weeks and come back to him. And it was just in my spirit, I have to talk to somebody today or I'm going to freaking lose it. And I went with Jackie Horry. And when I tell you the best experience, like, they always say a black woman, but y'all really are. Like, I'm telling you, man, the source. Like, black women are just, no, no shade to any other race, but it's just something different about black women. It's just a coddling, it's a, it's a maternal instinct, it's a love, it's a conversation, it's an understanding, it's an acceptance. And um, it was the best thing ever. So from there, like I um, started a group called No Man, and this is for husbands only. Like, you know, you have to be a husband, you, you can't be engaged, you have to be married, and it's like 70 of us in the group, and it's just a safe haven space for us to just dialogue and just we, once a week, we'll have a conversation dealing with marriage, but then the rest of the week is just trash talking, all your cowboys suck, all your, like it's just good vibes, it's just a bunch of trash talking. And then, you know, like, so that, those are things that I like to do to try to continue to build that, and then they can take that information, and hopefully they're raising their sons like that, and having a conversation, and that conversation. And we just sort of change the narrative that we have growing up, hopefully, um, that's just being done. It's definitely generational. I feel 100%. like, yeah, the more self-aware we are, the more we're more aware than our parents' generation and, Facts. you know, the generation before that. So right. I'm sure that you all will continue to be more self-aware and we'll keep pushing this narrative forward where we right. can talk about tough things because the truth is we be going through it. Facts. It's just is what it is. Life be life. In. Exactly. So like, so let's just say the mirror, life be life. Yes, it does. For everybody, like, regardless of how good somebody else's situation look like, you, on Instagram, you see the highlights. Yeah. You see everybody's highlight reel. So when you see somebody, you're like, oh, I feel like I have to live up to this, H, to this IG persona that I've created. So stop creating false personas and just post what you're posting. Post your life. Post what you like doing. Yeah, yeah that's very important. Thanks. Speaking of self-awareness, I want to know what does self-care look like for you? Because I feel like as a black woman, we've pretty much grabbed self-care by the neck and owned that and walked in that. But I don't hear men talking about self-care a lot. So what does self-care look like for you? I'm going to tell you why. It's interesting. I didn't even know what that word meant when y'all sent it to me. Oh. And my homie Jay, I asked her, I said, what is self-care? Mm. And she was like, because a woman, right? She said, it's awarding yourself grace. Like giving yourself grace so that you can give grace to other people, right? And from that space, Men usually, especially black men, don't allow ourselves to give ourselves grace. Mm -hmm. We're so dependent upon, not just in our friend circles, but usually in our family circles, and then in social circles. So we feel like, as men, a lot of times, we can't slip, we can't show you weakness, we can't show you flaws. And if we do, damn, we know we let somebody down. Not allowing ourselves, my son is going through this thing, and it's crazy when you said allowing grace. I, I, I used that same terminology with my son earlier. He's 17. He um, was a junior in high school, right? 
his road to playing basketball has been very, very um, dissatisfying, for lack of better words. We finally found him a space in Charlotte where he's on a team, first time in high school, his junior year, and he's on JV. And he's upset about it because he knows that his peers are, oh, you're an 11th grader on JV, right? But I told him, bro, give yourself some grace. Like, you've never played basketball under a whistle in high school. You don't know the speed of the game. You've never been in a situation where it's two minutes left and you have to win the game. Get that experience and understand that the long-term goal is you want to play collegiate basketball. So I'm just having that conversation with him. Like, understand that, and I say that to you, to, to the men in the room, understand it's okay for us to mess up. Understand it's okay for us to not to 100% know how to love correctly, right? Like when we're growing up a lot of times as men, we talk that we can only have two emotions, happy and mad. That's it. Don't show no sadness. Don't show no fear. Don't, no, nah, you can't show no fear. It's okay to be scared. Like these are emotions that we're supposed to experience. There's no shade in feeling those experiences. It, 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 that's the reason why a lot of times, like you, in events like this, you see it's 80% women and 20% men. Mm -hmm. Because men, like, they don't want to show a side where they feel like they have to learn yeah. or they don't know something. But that's, again, generational, like we were taught. Because if you think about it, our fathers and our grandfathers, they lived in a time where they couldn't show fear. Mm -hmm. They had to be strong. They couldn't be out in the community being soft, so they raised their sons for that, right? So what we have to do is we have to start changing the conversations that we're having with our men. We have to change the conversations that we're having with each other. Like I was taught in therapy that you're never angry, or your anger, or anger is a result emotion. Yeah. Like you're not just angry, you're angry because of something. Yeah. Either you feel disrespected, or your feelings are hurt, or somebody lied to you. That, that made you angry. So if you can, you, you can decipher what made you angry and deal with that, you're less likely to be angry. Yeah. And these are the types of conversations that we got to start having and letting folks know that it's okay to feel certain ways. It's okay to show your emotions. That does not make you any less of a man. That does not emasculate you. It actually shows a lot of maturity, especially emotional maturity. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. About. So what would you say are the first steps for that, for like young brothers like these who are like, uh, is it like getting a mentor? Is it just start talking to a homie who probably have never been like, you know, had these conversations about self-care? They're going to walk out of here and be like, so what's y'all self-care practice? Right. You know? See, I think, I think words like that throw you off. Self-care. Like, what are your self-care practices? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what is, what is self-care? Like, I go get manicures, pedicures. Like, is that self-care? You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's guys that be like, you get manicures? Yes. Mm -hmm. Gloss on them. Need your things to shine. I didn't get a chance to get that today, but you know the vibes. <laughs> like, it's okay. So self-care, sometimes self-care is nothing more than just in your room by yourself listening to nothing. Or just, I like to go driving and, and nothing. No music, no nothing. That's self-care for me because we're in environments where it's always rowdy. I'm always teed up. So for me, my self-care, you know, so like, I think, I don't know if those are the words that would be used or maybe being educated and more comfortable using those words. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't, we don't tend to use self-care. Like, you wouldn't ask him what's his self-care practices. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're like how you want to chill out? Like, what you do to vibe out? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Or how do you check in with yourself mentally? Because I feel like that's a big component of self-care. Uh, the wellness industry has packaged self-care, like manicure, pedicure, massage, hair done, eyelashes, all of that. But it's so much deeper, you know, like you mentioned, it's sometimes it's things that don't cost any money. It's right. like, what am I feeling today? It's checking in with your mind, checking in with your heart, checking in with your spirit. You know, what do you need right now in this moment? So maybe the conversation isn't what is your self-care practice, but how are you checking in with yourself? How's your mental health right now? I think that's, I, I like that, and that's something that you just educated me on, and that's something that I'll share. Like, I think we should start doing that. Yeah. Just asking, are you good, bro? Are you good mentally? You know what I'm saying? Like, because you don't know, like, I had a friend of mine, I just found out that he lost his mother to a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, and that's why he wasn't, well, I didn't see him at homecoming. You know, like, and I'm, I felt a little guilty, like, dang, like, 
I should have checked on my brother like when I realized that he, I didn't see him. Like, dang, everything good with you? And we just don't do that enough. Yeah. So I do think, but again, that, that's with intentionality. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a very important word, man. You have to be intentional in whatever you're doing, in your schoolwork, in your loving, in your, in your relationships, in your relationship with yourself, with your relationship with whatever spiritual. You have to be intentional. And I think intentionally asking people and, and, and taking that serious, like, yo, you good mentally, though? Like, I know it's exam week, you good mentally? I know you have you rough homecoming, you good? Everything good? So, fellas, we good with that? Can we start that? I want to start that right here at WSSU. Y'all know we trend stuff. Like, let's be clear. Like, it's a lot of stuff that was started right on this campus that the world is enjoying. Yeah. Like, before I let go, by Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, that's us. That's WSSU at the beginning of that. Love that. Turn that on. Yes, absolutely. But, fellas, can we start that intentionally? Not ODing, but just when it hits your spirit. Just ask your brother and your sister how they doing mentally. Can we start that as you? Yeah. Ask you, I want all everybody in the room. Can we start that? Yeah. Intentionally. Yeah. All right, y'all got our word. We're going to start that for sure. And we'll be checking in. Say less. Say less. <laughs> So, B Dot, you shared a lot. You dropped a lot of gems, preached a sermon uh -huh. today. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Is there any final thing that you want to leave the students with today? I love y'all. Oh. Like, for real. I love y'all, man. Like, I genuinely love y'all. And if you don't know anything about me, I love my alma mater. I would do anything for this place. And, like I tell y'all all the time, I'm just a DM away. Some people listen and take it right, they, they jump on it, some people don't. But I am a DM away. I've made a lot of connections through the years. If it's something you need, if I can't get you directly in contact with that person, I'm sure I know somebody that knows somebody. So continue, like, just continue to take your L's and continue to enjoy the hell out of your W's. Oh. But enjoy this moment. Like, please do not rush this moment. I was out here last weekend with thousands of people that wish they could swap seats with y'all right now. Now you talk to an alum right now, you ask them, if I could snap my fingers and you be a student, not be where you at, would you do it? And every one of them, would, me included, would say yes, right now. I'm telling you, I'm telling y'all, man, and I know it might not feel like that right now, you can have these dorms and you can have these, I was so happy walking in my dorm room, damn yesterday, my old dorm, I was in Brown yesterday, went up there giving out some dollars, like, it felt good just being this you know, let you know, dang, I shot me in the wrong dorm. Bro, now, listen, on the fifth floor, I'm talking on the fifth, see? What floor are you in? I'm on the fifth floor, it's a girl's floor now. I know, I was up there, it was a female I gave it to her. She got a Halloween sign up. It was like 515, I think it was, something like that. Nevertheless, the moral of the story is the money gone. <laughs> you missed it. It's gone. It's big. Now, you missed that blessing. But again, man, I, seriously, last words, enjoy being around, man, because this is going to follow you. And participate in stuff, man. Yes. Pledge. Be a part. Go to, go to the um, coordination on homecoming. Be a part of Mass Comm Department. Get, get, start your podcast here. Whatever you're thinking about, I'm going to start this when I graduate. Start it now. Yeah. If styling is what you do, find out who the coolest person on campus and say, yo, let me style you for the next event. That's how you start to build your audience and build your network and build your net worth eventually. Yeah. But I love y'all. That's all I want y'all to know about me. If you need me, I love you. Love you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you. I will say I'm very inspired by you here as an alumni. I'm inspired by all of you. At an HBCU, like I said, I did not have this experience, and just to see all of these beautiful black faces and all of y'all being together, it just warms my heart. So continue to do the good work that you're supposed to do, and be the person that you're supposed to be. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Chew back up, chew the back up, chew the back up, spit. If you ain't around, no cursing. Good job, man. Love it. Period. Tell us. Oh. <laughs>